Hello everyone and a very warm welcome back to my YouTube video and a video that I think, or I hope at least, will go down well. Um, this has been long overdue. It's a do's and don'ts of wedding guest outfits. And basically I get tons of questions all the time really about wedding guest outfits and quite honestly I, I put it off because I think it's so hard out there and that's obviously why you're asking me um, is because it's a minefield. There's a very limited choice I would say and there's lots of things out there that I personally think are just not very nice. So um, I really wanted to pull some outfits together but more than that I wanted to give you some tips to take away that you can use when getting dressed and um, when preparing your outfits for a wedding or any other special occasion. And these are just things that I would probably avoid doing and then what I would kind of replace that with instead. Obviously, as always, these are not hard and fast rules. You can bend them, you can shape them. That's what style is. But if you're not really sure where to start, then hopefully this will be a useful guide for you. So one of the reasons I have kind of put this off is because I obviously don't own tons of outfits um, to wear as a wedding guest. So what I've done instead is compile um, some picture montages, all shoppable things um, that I'm going to use to aid me in these points, rather than going out and buying a whole wardrobe of wedding guest outfits, which obviously would just be quite wasteful um, and also I don't want to buy a load of don'ts to show you so I've compiled pictures instead of things that you can then go and buy if you so wish and everything will be linked below. So my first tip is something I've kind of mentioned before and it's don't pair a black jacket and black shoes with a bright or patterned or colorful dress. So my first example is this beige printed dress. It's got some color on it and then I've shown it with black shoes and a black blazer and I think this is a lot of the time a go-to for people because we probably all own a black blazer and black shoes and it's easy but I actually think it really really kills the color of the dress and just drains the dress completely. So what I would do instead is go for something lighter colored. I think a cream is a really nice option. Obviously not a white with it being a wedding, but I definitely think you could go for a cream coat. I think that would be very acceptable with a printed dress. I think will look really chic. It just makes it feel a little bit more fresh and light and also makes the dress stand out a lot more. You could go for a tonal if you wanted to as well and maybe pick a color out of the dress. But I think if you're wanting to buy those pieces that you can actually wear again, um, then a cream is a really nice option or just a very pale beige or something like that. And then you can still go for the matching shoes if you want to, but I would just avoid that heavy black with the brighter prints and colors. follows on nicely from that is that don't feel you have to match your bag, shoes and hat all the time. It can feel a little bit dated. So my example with this is a pink dress with navy accessories. I think again, going back to that color thing, the navy is draining the pink a little bit and it feels too harsh with the pink. But don't feel like you have to go for that all matchy matchy kind of look. What I would do instead is maybe pick one piece to match and then go different with your other pieces. So for my example, I've kept the pink dress, gone for a bit of pink in the hat, also added some green in there and then some neutral accessories. So you could match your bag and your shoes, you could match your shoes and your hat, but don't feel like you have to match everything at once. Sometimes it looks good and it works, but a lot of the time it can look a little bit old fashioned. Number three, I think is something people necessarily don't ever think of, but I personally wouldn't wear a jumpsuit. I actually think jumpsuits now, some of them at least, can look a little bit dated. I feel like jumpsuits were a massive thing 10, maybe even 15 years ago, but I do feel like some of them can be a bit dated. But not only that, I do feel like jumpsuits can be really restrictive as well. They're not very comfortable, they're not easy to wear. Um, you can't really layer them with a jacket that easily. And I just think they can look a little bit clunky. So what I would do instead, if you wanted that kind of trouser look, is go for a matching trouser suit. 
I would particularly go for something in a softer fabric because I feel like it's a little bit, I don't know, less workwear-like. And I would also avoid anything like black, navy, gray, again, to just kind of steer clear of that workwear feel. So I've gone for this crushed kind of velvet suit. You could go for something um, a little bit more lightweight, like a viscose, but I think just kind of avoid that workwear style in terms of color and fabric and heaviness. And I think then go for accessories that feel a little bit more dressed up. So I've paired it with the gold bag to just kind of give it that lift. Um, and I think just basically do anything you can to take the trouser suit out of the workwear feel. And I think this is a really easy way to do it. And also is really comfortable as well and is something that you can wear after the wedding too. You can wear as separates, but also wearable for other events too. Tip number four is don't feel like you have to buy something. I think this is definitely a movement at the moment and I think more and more people are doing this, um, but often we forget that you can actually rent pieces. There are so many um, rental websites out there and even like kind of brands now, like big brands, I feel like Selfridges maybe does it. Also, there are definitely some brands out there, I'm sure like that, that do rental pieces, but also there's her, um, I think Rent the Runway is an American one. There's something called Higher Street, there's Buy Rotation. There's so many different places you can go and actually rent a designer dress that has that designer elevated feel um, for a fraction of the cost. So it's definitely worth considering that and not wasting your money on, you know, a really fancy expensive piece that you'll only wear once. Next is don't feel like you have to wear a printed dress. I think this is a go-to for a lot of people um, is a printed dress. Maybe they feel it's more dressy, but honestly, I think you can go so wrong with a printed dress. There's just certain prints I think you should really avoid and certain maybe color prints together that I would avoid. I don't like anything too kind of 60s retro looking. Um, I again, don't think that's dressy enough, but I think it's a bit dated too. I think you should avoid any colors like purples and oranges together, or purples and pinks, or navies with like bright colors as well. I don't think works well in a print. Um, I think sometimes you can just look at a print and completely rule it out. Also, I love polka dots, but I don't love it when they do different types of polka dots within one dress or even different stripes within one dress. I think if you're going for a pattern, it needs to be continuous and it needs to be maybe a little bit more subtle in its color. I think sometimes, you know, really bold prints uh, I don't know, I feel like they're a bit brash and garish, whereas a softer colored print works much better. So I would instead wear something that is all the same color, um, just one color basically, a block color. I would also, I personally would avoid anything too bright. I don't love really bright colors. I know some people do, but I would probably go for something a little bit more muted personally myself, but I think block colors often can look a lot more expensive, a lot classier than a print, and it's also a lot easier as well. So with all of the pieces, all of my do's that I'm showing, um, I'll have links below and they should be corresponding to the tip. Um, so hopefully it will be easy enough for you to find if you do see a piece that you think, ooh, that would be perfect for a wedding that you've got coming up. Tip number six just follows on from the print. And yes, you can wear print, of course, but I just wanted to elaborate more on what I was saying about the type of print is to maybe just go for something a lot more subtle. I've included some examples of what I mean. So I do have a floral ruffle dress. It's an under the stories one. And what I was saying before about the more subtle tones, I think this does it really nicely. It has that colorful feel to it, but I think Imagine this dress in all of these tones, but the brightest version of those tones. And I think it, it would just totally ruin the dress. So it's nice to go for those more subtle, muted versions of the color when you're combining them all together. I think it just gives a lot more kind of seamless look to the outfit when you go for a softer um, color palette. 
And then what I was saying about polka dots or any kind of print is just probably go for that print and make sure it's the same all over. Again, it looks a lot more streamlined and fluid, but also has that kind of classic and modern feel to it. And then also I would just say, maybe go for more earthy tones together if you're going for anything printed. Like I say, I think things like purples and reds and blues together, oh no, they just don't look nice in my opinion. Um, so going for something a little bit more earthy in a print, I think works really nicely. So my next tip is all about hats and it is to be careful with your proportions when it comes to hats. So obviously hats come in all shapes and sizes, but actually you really need to think about balance. This is what I mean by kind of the color sandwich, balancing proportions, proportion sandwich. I talk about it all the time, but that really plays into a hat as well. So a larger brimmed wide hat looks a lot nicer with a longer, maybe something slightly more floaty dress, something that has quite a lot of fabric to it to balance out the wider hat. I think you need something, maybe even a shoulder pad. You just need some elements in your outfit to give it that um, kind of wider feel that the hat provides otherwise you'll look a little bit off balance then I've also got a small pillbox hat which I think looks really nice done in a kind of military style look something quite polished quite pulled together quite smart I think this pillbox style doesn't work as well with like a floaty dress I think you need something with a bit of structure to it, almost kind of 1940s. Again, a shoulder pad I think would work really nicely with a pillbox hat, but maybe something a little bit more fitted to, so that it doesn't kind of look off place and small on your head um, against like a really big dress. My next piece of headwear is a headband. I would just say for this, I mean, I think headbands go with most things. I would just say if you've got something quite fussy in your dress, like a print or a pattern, I'd just keep your headband very, very minimal. Just a really thick, chunky headband. I think when it comes to a wedding as well, the chunkier the headband, the better, because you want to make it look more of a hat. So I'd probably avoid anything too slim. Um, and flat and go for something kind of padded and chunky. And then that kind of smaller hat with the big detail on top that just kind of perches almost like a fascinator, although I don't like fascinators, but this has that kind of hat look to it. They look nice with either a slimmer or A-line silhouette. Again, something a little bit neater, so the hat doesn't kind of feel a little bit too disproportionate against the rest of the outfit. Tip nine is not to wear anything too floaty, lightweight, anything kind of halter neck style that flows down. Just feels too beachy, um, too kind of boho, and I think you need a bit of structure to the outfit. So I would instead say that, you know, you don't have to tick all the conventional boxes. You could go for a mini if you wanted to, or something a little bit shorter, but just make sure you have those elements of structure to them. For example, you could have a nice bow at the neckline, a long sleeve, you could go for a structured shoulder, maybe a big puff sleeve. I think you just need those extra elements of structure, like I say, to make it feel more formal and more like wedding attire. So that is all my do's and don'ts tips, but I just wanted to finish on a couple of more outfit inspiration kind of pieces, some um, kind of takeaways that maybe you can shop um, if that's something you're looking for or just get some inspiration. So sorry, I just had to change the battery of my camera, but hopefully the angles are all still okay. Um, so anyway, my first look that I'm sharing is this pink suit. Again, like I was saying before, a nice soft fabric um, in a suit I think works really well. And just make sure you dress it up with some accessories. You could go for something kind of metallic or kind of that pearlescent feel to it and I think that gives a suit a dressier feel. Look two is a bit more of a party look, a bit more of a fun look, um, something shorter and it's these green and silver tones. I think green and silver look really nice together um, and I could actually see this looking really bold but chic on somebody, especially with the headband as well. Like I was saying before, you don't wanna go all matching necessarily, but I think it's okay to kind of pick out certain pieces and match those together without kind of going head to toe matching. So the shoes have some black on, but they've also got a silver pointed toe just to kind of tie them all together. Look three is this 
kind of yellowy buttery cream and black um, which I think just looks so chic if you want to go down that kind of classy sophisticated um, route then I think this is a really nice dress I love the button detail down the front um, just keep it sophisticated with uh, a pointed heel um, a stiletto kind of heel and then a smart structured bag as well so look number four I wanted to add some color in here and I love these two tones together this kind of almost it's like a darker royal blue it's like a slightly darker toned version um, with this almost tobacco-y tan shade I think works really nice together it looks bold it looks chic and it looks modern I think it's different nobody else will probably be wearing these tones together because I think a lot of people wouldn't even think to pair these together but it actually looks so nice. These fabrics as well are perfect to kind of feel more dressed up for a wedding and because they're separate so you can wear them in lots of different ways. Um, you can dress them up, dress them down um, and kind of get a bit more cost per wear after you've actually worn them to the event. And then finally is this kind of silvery, almost silvery bluey suit. This is from Zara, I think. Um, and I paired it just with some silver accessories. I love silver tones together. Silver is very in right now, if that's kind of the route you want to go down with metallics. Um, and I think, again, this is a suit you could wear after a wedding, but I think it will look really nice. Um, it's not too over the top with it being a suit. It still feels pulled together um, and sophisticated, but just has a bit of a fun edge with the metallic. So I really hope this has been useful for you. That is always my main aim with these videos is that you've kind of taken away something, hopefully maybe learned something or just gained some inspiration um, if you are a bit stuck on something to wear for a wedding. I know it's a minefield out there. There's so many options. Um, so hopefully this has broken it down for you. If you liked it, please let me know because I can do more of these on more wedding guests inspo ideas um don't forget hit that subscribe button and i'll see you in my next one